welcome back to my channel. We are doing our second episode of the instructional videos today. What I thought we would do is go through a basic, very quick stretching routine that does go from anywhere between beginner and advanced level. So depending on where you're at, obviously you can turn it down or you can extend it out a little bit more, but we're gonna go through some real basic stretches that I do every single time before I train, and it really opens up those certain parts of my bodies that I need to be able to do all the flexible handstands and flips that I do. We're gonna run through some leg exercises first that will build up the flexibility for your splits. So the very first exercise we're doing is a butterfly. All you have to do is put your feet together, knees out to the side, shake out your knees, trying to reach the ground each time whilst keeping your feet together. So do a couple of these and then you're gonna do a hold where you try and push your knees down as far down to the ground as you can, holding your knees, pushing down, extending out as far as you can go and holding. Second exercise we're going to do is a pike sit. So legs are out in front of us, nice and tight and straight. We're going to be bending at the hips forward. Our number one rule for this stretch is to try and keep your chest open and your back nice and flat. So when you're doing this stretch, if you are hunching over and leaning forward, this isn't going to be doing as much for you in regards to your flexibility and pushing that, um, pushing that really uncomfortable spot as it would be if you were to open your chest and pull down through your arms. So we're gonna grab wherever's comfortable on your legs, pull yourself down while keeping your chest up, and then when you get to the point where you're at your lowest, then we can tuck the head in and try and hold that. Third exercise is a straddle stretch. Hello, hi. This is a YouTube video, Lulu. <laughs> Hopping out, go, go. Third exercise is a straddle stretch. We're going to have our legs out to the side this time. Again, nice and straight, keeping them nice and pointed and tight. So a lot of the times people don't know whether to uh, relax their muscles or to tense their muscles when they're doing a stretch. Either one works. I would say relax when you get to a point where your technique is good in that stretch. So squeezing until you get to your good technique position and then relaxing to get that little bit of an extra depth in your stretch. So what we're going to do is in our straddle stretch, we're going to lean forward first into a pancake. So you're bringing your arms out, again, keeping your back nice and straight, not hunching over through the chest, back nice and straight, and dropping to your lowest point. When you get to your lowest point, relax those legs and try and go a little bit lower. I'm gonna hold that position for about 10 seconds. Returning back up, we are going to do each single leg in this position. So what we're going to do is opposite arm, opposite leg. So I've got my left arm up in the air right now. It looks like the right to you guys because obviously the filming's a little bit different. Left arm up in the air goes to my right leg and I'm leaning over to my left leg. So I'm actually opening up through the chest as I do this. Again, if you're not flexible enough to be able to lean over and touch your toes, you will still be doing the same thing, but just leaning over. So either way, touching or not touching at all. We're trying to open up through that chest and use the other arm round to stretch that out a little bit further than what we could have originally. And then coming back up, we're going to swap over to the other side. Again, opposite arm, opposite leg, drop down to your lowest point, holding, relax through the legs, drop a little bit further, coming back up. Next exercise we're doing is a herky stretch. So what you're going to do is go into our pike position. We're folding one leg out to the side at a 90 degree angle tucking the foot just in between behind our bottom. So I'll do it to the side so you guys can see from here. So tucking that out, foot is right close to our bottom. We're going to lean forward onto the front leg, isolate this one leg hammy, leaning forward, holding our lowest point there. And then we're gonna come up and we're going to go forward into a diagonal. So this diagonal is really something different. I find that when I do it at my workshops and I do it with my clients, even if you're very flexible in that front leg and you have that flexibility there, sometimes people don't have the flexibility to do the center area. And that's usually because of hip flexors. So this works hip, hip flexors as well as your legs and the mobility in that area. So leaning into the middle on a diagonal. So when I say middle and diagonal, I mean between my right and my left leg, even though they're in that 90 degree angle. So we're going in between that at about 45 degree angle, holding for the lowest point that you can and then releasing back up and then we're going to swap over to the other side. So same thing on the other side. Again, you can see quite well now that my foot is tucked right next to my bottom, leaning forward. When we do lean forward, you want to keep your hips nice and square as well. You don't want to be turning out because that's what we're going to do for our next um, stretch, that diagonal stretch. So coming forward, we want our hips nice and square facing forwards, leaning onto that front leg 
And then when we go to the diagonal leg, that's when you will go out that way and you can open up your hips a little bit more. Next exercise we're going to do is specific to split stretching. So you guys probably would have seen this all over the internet because any gymnast or any person coaching or working on flexibility will do these exercises. So they're pretty basic, but they are definitely key to getting your splits and opening up those areas that you need to be able to achieve your splits. So very first one is your lunge, nice and easy. When you are doing your lunge though, you wanna make sure that your toes do not, sorry, your knees do not cross your toes. So if I was doing my lunge and my knee was crossing my toes, I don't get the same stretch as that as what I would if my toes were in front of my knees. So when you're doing your lunge, making sure your toes are the furthest point that way, keeping our hips nice and square and really sitting into it as low as you can. So you'll feel it through your back hip flexor and you might even feel a little bit through the front hip flexor as well, just from that weight bearing. And then you'll also feel it in that front hammy. From here, we are going to go to a hamstring stretch. So straighten out that front leg, up on the knee on the other leg, bottoms in the air, and from here, we're going to go flat chest again, like our pike and our straddle stretch. We're gonna bring it down to the leg as low as we can. When we get to that position, we're gonna relax through that leg a little bit. I'm gonna flex our foot as well. So we're getting a stretch in our calf muscle. From here, we're going to go into our third position, which is the pigeon stretch. So front leg tucks in, foot comes next to the hip flexor, which I'll do the other leg and show you guys in a second so you can see where, where it's actually sitting. Back leg is nice and tucked under, so you can see that my foot and my leg, they're both turned under, they're not turned out. If they were turned out, then that's not working the right area, so we want it tucked under and toes to be touching the floor. Your toes won't be touching the floor if your hip is turned out. So I'll quickly show you those stretches on the other leg so you can see from a different perspective. So we have our first one, which is our lunge. Again, really stretches through this hip flexor. Coming into our hamstring stretch with our flexed foot. Keeping our hips nice and square, try not to turn them out or to drop through the hips in any position. Nice and square, chest down as low as you can. And then the pigeon stretch, which again, bringing that foot and that heel as close to the hip as possible. And then we're also trying to focus on this back hip being as close to the ground as possible. So we're trying to push that down because that is opening up our back hip flexor for your splits when you do them in a second. So, like I said, we are going to do the splits now. You've done your warm-up on both your left and your right leg of those three exercises that were specific to splits. Best way to do it when you're learning your splits or when you were learning that sort of mobility is to have something where you can weight bear on. So I've got my chocks to use, but obviously I can do the splits, so it's a little bit different. But when you are going to a point where you're at your maximum and you're not touching the ground, that's where we want something to help out, whether it's a block, whether it's the chocks, whether it's a bench, anything that you can push down on to sort of save yourself from pushing too much into your split. So we're gonna place these out to the side and we're literally just going to go for it, putting that leg out in front like we did with our lunge, coming down, sliding the leg as much as you can. I'm gonna hang here for a little bit just to show you that if I was unable to do the splits, this is where I could sit. I'm pushing down with my hands on these chocks, weight bearing through that, and then I'm only pushing as much as I want into my splits. I'm gonna go all the way down because I've got my splits currently and I just wanna show you technique wise some stuff. So at the front, we've got our sh nice straight leg squeezing up through the leg. You can relax it as well, obviously in the split. Again, it's a stretch. The more you relax, the more you're gonna go down into depth in that stretch. Back hip, most important part. So our back hip flexor, we want that to be pushing down to the ground as low as possible and our back foot, we want that turned under. So even our knees, we don't want our knees facing out or towards, for example, the camera right now. That's not a good split, that's turning into a side split. We want it tucked right under, hips nice and square, facing forward, and then you should be able to drop forward at the hips with no problem. Would be tight for your front hammy, but it's just a good little test to understand whether, like where your hips are facing, because if you drop forward and your hips are facing out like this, you're not gonna be able to drop forward, you'll chop onto the diagonal where your hips are facing. So nice and square hips, coming through, you should be able to drop forward, come back up, we're gonna do the other leg quickly. So again, I'll get the chops out ready. This is actually my good leg this second time. I always, always do my bad leg first because naturally, subconsciously, you will push more in your first leg because you're not ready for the pain. And it's not that bad of a pain, I promise, but it, again, just a subconscious thing that your body will work extra hard in the first attempt than it would in the second. So always start with your bad leg and then go on to your good leg. So good leg is next. 
Again, if I'm wanting to weight bear, I can hold my weight in these chops. I can push up high, I can push down lower, wherever I want to go, but that's all dependent on my flexibility. Because I've got the flexibility, I'll take them away, make sure my hips are nice and square, drop through the front, nice and easy, all done. Last one for our splits is our side splits. This one's super important, also the worst. I'm not gonna lie, it hurts like a bitch, but that's okay because we need to do it. So the best pro progression for this is a froggy hold. So what you're going to do is knees out to the side, come down on your elbows and you're trying to push your hips down as low to the ground as possible. The main point that you need to remember for this one though is that your knees and your bottom have to be in line. You can't be hanging back too far and you can't be hanging forward too far. They have to be in line with each other. Next progression from this is obviously the side splits. So I'm going to hop into a position that some of you guys might be at. So say our legs are out to the side here. From here, you can hold with your hands on the ground, but I would prefer you guys to drop down to your elbows and hold through the elbows. The reason being for this is obviously it drops more weight into the split and it's actually pushing you a little bit more. When you're holding yourself up on your hands, you're just literally holding up your weight in a comfortable position 99% of the time. So you wanna drop down, push it a little bit further and you can control where your line is from there in regards to your feet and your bottom. So I'm gonna drop down to my position on my elbows, most of my weight is in my legs right now because I can control that. But if I do want to bring it forward, I can do so and I can do it coming back. If you are at the level that you've got your side splits down pat, when you get into this position, you should do some rocks back and forth. So coming up, so your knees are facing up, coming back down, up and back down. So you're really opening up your hips and you're turning out your legs and you're focusing on your side split through the whole motion and through all of the positions of it, not just being flexible in one and then coming up to the other and being uncomfortable. So we're trying to open up those hips the whole time, keeping our hips down to the ground the whole time until you come up in that straddle stretch here. This one is for the more advanced stretches. So the people who have a flat left, right and middle split and want to progress on further with that and get an over split. So this is called over stretching. What you're going to do is you're going to need a block or something that's elevated that you can leave an ankle or a foot or a leg resting on and doing a stretch. So first one we're gonna do is an extended straddle stretch. Block goes over to the side, getting into that straddle stretch that we did just before. One foot goes up on the block, just the one, because it focus on, focuses on the one hip flexor and the one leg. And we're just gonna come forward in that straddle stretch. So as low as you can go, so there's a little pushing out, as low as you can go in that straddle stretch, holding for that time. Make sure that you don't only focus on that one leg. You want to be opening up both hips. So same thing on the other leg, coming forward. If you do need to extend this leveling up, you can add another block if you have one or grab a different level um, platform of any sort, but you just need something to rest that on because it's literally just holding up the leg. You can also grab a friend who can lift up the leg as well. I know I use Tanya quite a bit for that. Um, but other than that, just something that you can rest your foot on and go from there. So the next one is our overstretching in our splits. We've got two different types for this. So first one, we have our front leg on the block. And then second exercise, we have our back leg on the block. So we'll go through it all in this one go. So what we're going to do is place our foot again up on the block, dropping through the splits, arms out to the side. Remember, keeping our hips nice and square, focusing on the split. Drop forward to double check your hips are nice and square. Easy, done. Now we're going to go into the second exercise, which is the block sits in the back of our legs. So what it's going to do, it sits just near our knee on our back leg, placing our front leg in front of us, dropping through the front, through the front leg. So front leg should be completely touching the ground. Back leg, however, is elevated. So nothing is touching the ground in our back leg. But what you will feel when you're doing this split is you'll feel it stretch out this leg for one because the hip flexor of the back is raised, and then obviously that hip flexor that is raised, that will be stretching as well. So it's just to help with a little bit more of your arching as well. So you're meant to sit upright with it, you're not meant to fall forward. Sitting upright, holding this split, and then going back to the same one that you did the first exercise on the other leg. Again, just opening out the hips in the both ways that we know how to, front leg and then back leg. Lucky last one. My absolute most hated stretch is the extended side splits. So again, as you guys could probably already guess, placing one of our feet up on the block while the other leg is out straight in our side splits. So let's place it over here. 
One leg goes up, sliding into the side splits. And the only way you'll know if you're flat in this side splits is if this leg is completely flat and half of your hips are completely flat. So we're trying to push this part down. For me, there's a tiny, tiny little gap there at the moment. You guys might not be able to see it. So that is really stretching for me. I love this stretch. It's a pain in the ass though. Um, holding this one and then again, remembering to swap over legs. So we'll come through, swap legs, chuck it on the left leg, sliding into that split and holding again on the elbows. That is it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, it was just a little bit of a basic one, but I know a lot of you guys have been asking for it. I did talk a lot, I always, always over talk when I'm trying to teach people how to do certain things because I wanna make good habits in your stretching routines and your training routines and everything like that. So, I would say I'm sorry, but I'm actually not sorry. <laughs> Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, you got something out of it. Make sure you save it or send it to a friend who is needing to do a little bit of mobility work because I know we all need to do more mobility work. And let me know if you enjoyed it. Also let me know what you would like to see in my next video in my instructional little playlist of videos I'm going to be uploading over the next couple of months. So excited to get started. Let's get it.